Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be checking out an exciting development in the vintage PC web browsing world because we're going to be talking about Supermium which is a modern web browser for systems running Windows XP and above. And as you could have probably guessed from the name, this is based on Chromium, and it's developed by Win32, who's the same person behind the Windows Vista Extended Kernel that we talked about on this channel a little while ago. And you see, we've got the download page for it opened up here in Internet Explorer 6 on Windows XP, which just makes installing this on these older systems much more convenient because you don't have to copy the setup file over from another computer. As of this video, the latest release was published on February 1st, 2024, and it is based on Chromium 121. Now to run this, you need to have at least a system with a Pentium 4 that's SSE2 capable, and the developer does recommend either hyper-threading or having just a dual-core CPU. Uh, this system right here, just to open up Device Manager and show you, uh, this is probably right around the minimum requirements, I would say. We have a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz with hyper-threading, so it shows up as two cores in here, obviously. But yeah, uh, so we're going to take a look at this. We're going to uh, install it on Windows XP and on Windows Vista, which check it out on one of my old Vista machines and see how the performance compares, which it'll certainly run better on. It's a newer system. And uh, yeah, we'll just check it out and uh, see what you can do with it. So running Supremium on Windows XP as of right now, as of me filming this video, is a little bit more involving than just running a setup executable because uh, Windows XP does not like the setup executable. So I've got this downloaded. If we go into my downloads folder here, and if we try to run the setup file, uh, it will come up and say, do you want to install Supremium? We'll say yes, but once it extracts, it'll come up with an error message that says it couldn't find a particular DLL file. And well, this isn't the exact error message I was getting before, but you'll get an error message nonetheless. Uh, and what you have to do is uh, with 7-zip installed, because this is a 7-zip self-extracting archive, we're going to right click on it, go to 7-zip, open archive, and in here you want to extract the single DLL file. So we'll bring that out to our downloads folder. And then you want to right click on mini install installer.exe, click on open inside, and then you want to double click on chrome.7z, and then just extract the chrome-bin folder to wherever you want on your system, and drag the DLL file into here, then you can go inside and run chrome.exe. So I figured we'd start off with some lighter web browsing, and we're definitely going to try YouTube on this uh, towards the end, because uh, I want to show you guys the video playback performance, which of course is going to depend on what hardware that you're using, but I mean having a, a modern browser certainly helps. Uh, so let's just go to Google. And, you know, here's here's Google. Maybe we want to search for, I don't know, WinWorld. I feel like I don't talk about it enough. WinWorld PC is such a such a useful resource for uh, if you're into vintage operating systems and software because they've got just a whole library of stuff on here. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's loading up here. Maybe we could try to download something. Let's go uh, to their library and see what they got. Huh, why don't we go to... Let's go down here to Linux. Uh, Lindos. Yeah, I've been wanting to make a video on Lindos for a little bit now. Uh, it would be kind of a fun thing to do. I, I actually started writing a script uh, a couple months ago, but, you know, got sidetracked with other projects, as it always seems to go. Uh, so, yeah, we could download. I mean, I'm not going to actually download this, but, I mean, the point of going here is you can see that the... Uh, you know, page shows up just fine, everything loads. I mean, this is, again, Chromium-based. It's a modern version of Chromium, so, you know, everything that Chromium can display, it will be able to display, uh, which is which is nice. So, why don't we go, uh, let's see, what else can we do? I'm thinking of, like, what other websites I go to besides YouTube. Well, we could go to the old net, or actually, we could just go to the Internet Archive, because, yeah, we can just go straight to archive.org. We don't got to worry about uh, it not being able to display the page properly. We can go to maybe my Internet Archive profile, uh, for those who don't know, I do upload uh, stuff on Internet Archive every so often. Uh, people do often ask me to archive stuff. Uh, and, you know, so I, I do have a few, like, things on here, you know, that uh, have been seen in other videos. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Loads up perfectly fine. Uh, maybe we want to get, I don't know, the Cyberblade i7-8420 driver. This was for the NetPliance eye-opener back when I made that uh, video of it running Windows 98 and trying to play some games on it, which uh, went as spectacularly as you can probably imagine. So we can get the zip file here. Uh, downloads, of course, work, so there you go. Uh, also, signing into your Google account works as well if you want to, uh, you know, sync with all of your 
uh, bookmarks and everything, uh, you can do that. So Chromium is open source, by the way, uh, if you were uh, curious with it being Chromium based, you know, it, uh, it it makes sense. Why don't we go to YouTube? Why don't we uh, give this thing a little bit of a stress test here? Yeah, you probably saw I cheated a little bit and went to this website off camera just to kind of see how YouTube worked on here. Uh, because I was really curious, and uh, to tell you the truth, it actually it so does much better than I would have expected. You see, it's uh, already buffered my channel trailer here, my Microsoft didn't save Apple video, one of the videos I'm most proud of, by the way. Let's try to turn it up here. 1990s when the company wasn't do doing so well. Their product line. So yeah, you can probably hear. Confusing. They had been through two short-lived CEOs, and in 1996, reported a loss of $700 million. Yeah, so you can probably hear the audio is definitely, like, glitchy, and it is kind of slow. It's a slower playback. But the video, like, we're getting a pretty good Apple frame and rate. Um, and, you know, we are playing this back right now at 360p. We could lower this to, like, 240. I imagine we get uh, better results here. So why don't we do that? Two companies that have had a bit of a complicated relationship, starting out as business partners and later becoming... Yeah, the leaders. audio pretty much fixed itself there. this deal there. is a historic moment in the history of these two companies... I mean, way better than I would have expected, that's for sure. So we can, you know, scrub through here, uh, maybe get towards the, I don't know, 15-minute mark in the video, and hit play. Explore its default browser on the Macintosh. Let's try to go to 144p, back up a little bit here to a random spot and let it buffer a little bit. And uh, just hit play and see how it does. Internal emails between Bill Gates and other Microsoft employees came to light in the class action lawsuit Combs v. Microsoft. In one of these emails, discussions of canceling Microsoft... Eh, it's a little... I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely intermittent, but... I mean, it's pretty awesome to be able just to play YouTube videos back in here. Not that I would ever need to do that, because we got Warp Stream now for that. Uh, you know, if, which is a project I did a video on recently, although the quality is obviously not as great as it is on YouTube. Um, just for the heck of it, why don't we try to bump this up to, okay, 720. I'm not going to do 1080, but let's do 720. And um, we could open up Task Manager here, too, and just to show you the... Uh, you know, CPU graph, it's going to be max at 100% just peaking, but here's 720p, which said in part, the threat to cancel Mac Office 97 is certainly the strongest bargaining point we have have as doing so will do a great deal of harm to so Apple it's it's definitely having uh, also, trouble keeping up there let's bump it back down to 144 p i'm just kind of curious to see what the cpu graph looks like it's it's still going to be up there i mean but here we go believe that apple is taking this threat pretty seriously now eventually the oh no look at that it's uh, it's actually hovering around 30 50 okay it's bumping up a little bit macworld expo a deal was announced and while the investment of 150 yeah like like i said once it gets going it i mean for the most part is generous and pretty good in actuality it was only a portion of the money that microsoft had you can see that scrubbing through here makes the cpu usage graph go up but who again had nothing to do with this case to supposedly yeah like you can totally play this back even if it was out of their own free will would not make a difference for microsoft it would not change let's go back to 360 though i kind of want to see because I, I i noticed that we still got pretty uh, smooth playback eventually when we we're doing this on 360p earlier so In let's just microsoft see here promised not to use their influence as the largest operating system developer yeah i mean there's like the audio is fine choice with respect to make it full screen here OEMs who wanted to include both Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator with their systems paying certain telecommunications customers to switch to Internet Explorer from Netscape Navigator and yeah having it playing back in full screen uses more of the CPU consistently but I mean it's still either way extremely impressive so why don't we try to uh, hop over to my to one of my Windows Vista machines and uh, we'll see how the performance compares. All right, so we're here on the good old HP Compact 6510B running Windows Vista. And uh, the installer, by the way, for Supremium on Windows Vista works just fine. You can just double click on it and install it. So you don't have to go through that whole thing like we did on XP. Uh, but we're going to uh, just open up Device Manager just so I can show you uh, the hardware here. 
So we've got a dual core, uh, well, Core 2 Duo running at 2 gigahertz. So actually a slower processor uh, than we've got on the <laughs> on the uh, XP computer. That was 2.8 gigahertz, but it is true dual core instead of single core with hyper threading. So we'll see how it works. We've got Supermium open here. Let's go to YouTube and let's just search for my channel here. And why don't we try to watch my Famicom video? So you know when you're shopping online for something and you end up finding what you need? Yeah, like immediately uh, much better performance, I can already tell. Uh, of course, let's open up Task Manager here. Let's see, what are we playing back at? We're playing back at uh, 480p. So... been wanting for a while and then end up purchasing that as well. Well, that's what happened to me recently when I purchased... Hey, look, it's the same table that this laptop is on right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 480p playback is... Uh, Either way, I wanted to... F yeah, we've got no audio glitching or anything. ...get de -yellowed. So all I did was flip the plastic over and let it sit for, this time, a little more than 12 hours. Yeah, that is that is super awesome to see. Uh, let's. Oh, did YouTube change the closed caption button? It looks like they did. Let's bump this up to 720. Why not? 72060. And uh, see if this can handle... Uh, what YouTube does not consider HD video anymore, apparently. Uh, and here's how it looked when it was done. Now, you can't really see it so well in this shot. Yeah. The left and right sides, while... Uh, there was a little bit of slowdown there, I think, but... A little bit yellow. Let's just skip back to, to here, maybe. Everything plugged in, and the channel switch is set to channel 2. Now, the reason why I have to hook this up to my capture device is, uh, well, first of all, I would like to get really crisp uh, video. Yeah, I don't think we're really dropping frames there. Also, the CPU, let me just pause this so you don't have to hear me talking twice. Uh, the CPU graph, uh, you can see it wasn't really um, consistently maxed out. You know, it was kind of fluctuating a little bit. Uh, so 720p playback on this system is totally doable. Why don't we try, uh, I mean, of course, it's just one video here, like one single test. This is not like the most... Uh, I don't know, complete test, but this is just kind of trying stuff just to see what works. Uh, let's try to go to 1080p just for the heck of it. A device I have in this house uh, that I can manually tune to channel. Of course, we get like the one point in the video with just like a still frame of the Famicom. Let's try to go to the diagnosing the display issue section because we got a lot of motion going on here. And yeah, I can hear that fan picking up. Just for the heck of it, I decided to hook up the RF switch that I used earlier on the original Famicom, as the Super Famicom has both connections for hooking it up to a TV. And it worked just fine. The video signal was... Yeah, I can tell we're definitely dropping frames there. Uh, now, we are buffering. I, I, I don't want it to, you know, let's just go back here and let it maybe buffer a little bit. All right, we've got a good amount of video buffered there. Let's hit play. But unfortunately, that didn't change anything either. The video signal still looked scrambled. Though, notably, the audio was coming through just fine on both sets of cables. I just didn't have my cap... Okay, we've got a little bit of glitching going on, and, well, that was just buffering there, but... Honestly, better than I expected, that's for sure. I mean, 720p was, like, we were able to skip around just fine. Props to Nintendo there uh, for whoever designed the uh, Super Famicom artwork, so, yeah, we'll set that aside. And so here yeah, I can tell that the frame rate is, yeah, it is definitely dropping. Um, also, the video is out of sync with the audio now. Uh, so yeah, 1080p on this system is not really gonna, not gonna be the greatest, but it can still play it back. Let's just go back to 720p one more time here. This one does. we we'll probably just tear this open here like we did with the Famicom. And, uh, yeah, you see we've got that same, you know, packaging style with just a piece of cardboard over the styrofoam container that houses everything. Yeah, you see the system is, like, completely maxed out at 720p. But, I mean, 480, like, even 480p, like, that's still, that, that's still pretty impressive. Uh, it, it was able to play this back just fine. It's like we've got a power adapter. Yeah, like, that is... Oh, that styrofoam. And yep, this is that is amazing. I mean, this computer is from 2008. Just for those wondering, uh, that's when that's when this system uh, came out. So yeah, I mean, 480p playback, not too shabby, gotta say. So yeah, that is YouTube. Uh, and one thing I, I also want to briefly demonstrate are Chrome Web Store apps or Chrome extensions and themes for that matter. Because yeah, you can go to the Chrome Web Store. And you can download an extension or a theme or both or, you know, whatever you want from here. Why don't we go to themes and um, let's get this just black theme. Why not? So we'll add that to Chrome 
And there we go. So yeah, you can theme Supermium. Let's maybe get some extensions here. Uh, let's see, what is Google recommending? Um, ultimate car driving, Flappy Bird offline. Oh my gosh, someone's made a Flappy Bird extension. Yeah, why don't we get that? Is this official? Like, there is this by the same guy? Because he, you know, took Flappy Bird uh, off the App Store like years ago. That was like 10 years ago now, or at least around 10 years ago. Holy crap. Uh, but let's just add to Chrome. Uh, sure, it can read and change data on all websites. All right. Uh, and okay, so Flappy Bird offline. Oh, it shows up in this little window here. All right. So, oh my gosh, it has been... <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I thought I was better at this than that. All right, um, one more time. I know that was like the thing everybody said when they played this game. Just one more time. Also, playing it with a mouse is a little bit, I think, more challenging than with a touchscreen. Yeah. You know something that killed me recently? I was at like a, I think it was Dave and Buster's with some friends of mine, and they had a, like a Flappy Bird arcade game. I had not seen that before, and I'm like, geez, we're just bringing back apps from 2014. And uh, turning them into like, I mean, well, it wasn't like a Flappy Bird official thing. It was like a, you know, clone of it. But it was, you know, it was based on Flappy Bird, you could tell. But yeah, there you have it. That is Supermium, a modern Chromium-based browser for systems running Windows XP at a bare minimum. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this one and want to get early access to my future episodes, I do have a Patreon, or you can hit that Join button to become a channel member. But either way, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.